Hey everybody, Brendan here. Welcome back to a, another video. Today we're going to be continuing our semi-slav run since we have d4 played. We're going to meet knight f3 with knight f6. This is the most flexible and the reason why is because if they play bishop f4, there's a move we will want to play here. So we're not going to continue on with our semi-slav. Uh, we're going to be a bit more aggressive here and actually play c5. This is directly trying to punish the London. What's the idea behind it? The idea here is actually to punish the idea that uh, if they didn't take and they played something like c3 or e3, we now have queen b6, exploiting the fact that the bishop is no longer covering b2. They end up taking instead, so this will be quite interesting. I think I'm going to play e6. This looks pretty safe. Just focus on normal development, and we can recapture. And if they try to hold on to the pawn with b4, we do have moves like a5, capturing, uh, and we'll likely just win the pawn back anyways. So that's important to know. Very important to know, actually. So knight to c3 was played. We do want to watch out for any um, knight b5s. I think I can get away with taking, though. If knight b5, we have queen a5 check, and then they just have to return. That's not something they want to do. Otherwise, we can either continue developing, or if they play e3, we can also play a6. a6, uh, despite it looking like a slow move, is very important because it helps stop knight b5 and knight c7. Right? Whenever you uh, play against these types of setups with bishop f4, uh, and knight c3, these London systems, you got to ask yourself what the problems or what the weaknesses could be. And you can kind of see that a lot of pieces are looking at the c7 square. All right, a6. Awesome. We've covered that threat. And we'll just continue developing. We can develop either a king side uh, by castling or our queen side by playing knight c6. I thought knight c6 first might be a little bit more flexible. Ultimately, I don't know how much it matters. Now, where does this bishop want to go? We could play b5 and bishop to b7, or we can try to organize some sort of e5 and bishop to e6. What's more effective? I think when we look at our structure, that's a really good question. It's a really good question, in fact. I'm thinking of rook e8 in e5. So knight g5 is a bit of a waste of time. Um, either we can kick it first, or we can play e5 and then kick. I like playing e5 first. e5 has some additional threats involved. If they go queen h5, um, I can just go h6. There, there could be like potential mate ideas there. Um, as long as I cover it all, then I'm good. So I could go e4 immediately, but that kind of resolves tension and they won't go knight to f3. So what I want to do is I want to play h6 first, tell them, hey, you you got to play knight h3, a move you don't want to play. And then after they play it, I can play e4. We'll have to see what they play here. And great, now we have e4. Attacking both of these guys. So, great. We just controlled the center and we got a great position right from the opening. We created an, an imbalance, which is something that London players generally will not be a huge fan of. Uh, when you hear the London system, you think system, system opening. And um, there's a lot of things that are connotations that, that come with that. So... Being mindful of that is really important. Let's see how they take. Okay. And I see no reason to not take, but I also don't see a reason to take. I think bishop to e6 developing is uh, equally good, if not more good. It's, it's good. It's good. Uh, developing is always a good idea. If you can choose to develop or... Um, play some other move just focus on the development 
Here in IG6, I'm not really sure what this does. We can take that piece. Maybe they're trying to weaken the king side, but they just don't have sufficient compensation here. So bishop to f7 forces them away. Okay. Um, I could play rook e8. I don't hate queen e7. Let's play queen e7. I was looking at um, other moves, but I realized that my bishop and my knight are actually protecting d5, so I don't have to worry about them trying to take it. I'll bring my rooks to the center of the board, and we'll just continue our play. When you're up material, that's all you got to do. Bring your pieces into the game, right? Like, uh, when we look at it, these two uh, are equal to these two. So we just have these extra two pieces. And that's really nice. We're happy about that, actually. Uh, this is protected. So we can take, I believe. I'm not worried of any tactics here. It's very important that we are okay. Maybe they will miss. Queen takes c5. You never know. All right. Knight to d4. Adding the pressure. Improving some pieces. Getting them to the center of the board. Uh, I would love to improve my rooks, but, you know, they're creating some threats of their own with bishop takes f6. Um... So I don't want to dilly-daddle. Dilly-dally. Dilly-dally? Is it dilly-dally or dilly-daddle? I'm not sure. There we go. Um, regardless, we're doing good. Um, they missed that queen takes c5 is playable. Which results in a win for us. So um, this is going to be the introduction, essentially, to how I'm going to suggest playing against the London system. Um... There's a few move order things that I'm going to recommend, and that's meeting a knight move with a knight move and bishop with a pawn move. So whenever they play knight f3, play knight f6. If they play bishop f4, play c5. The idea behind this is that after c5, if they try to take the pawn and keep it, we actually have uh, this, this move queen to f6 here, attacking the rook in the corner, and the bishop on f4, this is really nice to have. Whereas if we played knight f6 first, and then played c5, this would not be possible. Uh, instead, when we get into lines with knight f3 uh, and knight to f6, and then bishop to f4, the c5 move is a little bit uh, better in this case, because after takes and moves like e6, if they try to hold on to the pawn, uh, they actually don't really want to use the move knight to f3 as an inclusion. They would rather have played something like c3 or a3 uh, if they're trying to be stubborn and hold on to the pawn. And luckily, uh, they won't really succeed and we will win the pawn back no matter what here. So uh, that's just like a small, small, small um, introduction. We will be talking a lot more about this. Uh, over the next few months because we are playing the London system as white uh, as a speedrun alongside this and also since we're playing against it as black we got to know our stuff and I'll probably make a independent video talking about these types of things and probably just doing a overall stretch of not just the London system but of course the semi-slav as well so thank you guys for watching and I will see you all in Wait, you know what? We should actually talk about the game a little bit more. My apologies. Um, so here, knight to g5 wastes time. And, and after knight to g5, they're wasting time and also reducing their control over the center. So e5 becomes even stronger. And once they deal with that and h6 is played, as you can see, we've already gotten way too much space. And uh, we can just look at moves like either bishop g4 or bishop takes on h3, followed by something like e4. I don't think is uh, completely unreasonable, even d4, to try to open things up when their king might be slightly weaker. So uh, this was kind of a problem uh, that they're faced with. Also, you can just point out that this bishop isn't just not good. 
so you can make other moves like maybe e4 or just leave the tension uh which is a very effective strategy when you have a nice center just leave leave it as is so moves like uh bishop e6 and uh queen d7 can just be very annoying and this is actually probably a much better way to deal with it because then you're threatening to win the pawn on h3 after taking on h3 um and i think that will be it so thank you guys for watching the second part of the semi slot and i will see you all in the next one bye bye Thank you.